Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're listening to The Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner. JackieCation.com has everything. Both of my podcasts, all of the stand-up stuff, the new album, links to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. But so, I think, does dorkforest.com, where you can look at old videos of different shows. Anyway, if you want to support the show... Tell people about the show, review it on iTunes, thumbs it up on Pandora or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I appreciate that. You can donate. You can donate monthly. PayPal lets you do that. You can also do my Venmo if you like. It's at Jackie Cation absolutely everywhere. And my email address is Jackie at JackieCation.com. And that's what the PayPal is. The PayPal link is on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And go to any of them. Thanks for listening. There's merch. There's stand up there's tour guide you know you can find out where i'm touring this is getting long so let's get into the show jackie cation here uh sleepy but ready to dork out with a uh, stand-up comic a podcast engineer for the jackie and Lori show a man who has his own podcast that is suspiciously similar to the dork forest called this is rad and he has two albums uh, that are both on iTunes and Amazon. Look up Kyle Clark, you guys. K Y L E C L A R K, and I believe it's Kyle Clark is rad on Twitter. Is that what it is? It is Kyle? indeed on the Instagram. Okay, yes. welcome Whoa. back to the show. Hey, good to be here. It's it's good to be on the show I stole from so liberally <laughs> all those years ago. And you know what? People are always like, two products can't exist. Uh uh-uh, uh, sure can. Sure can. And Joseph Scrimshaw has obsessed. Another show that I genuinely love. It's just oh, a yeah. celebration of what people like. That's you know what what's great? Like and right? stuff. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, we started it when the grand era of podcasting was podcasts where you just dunk on everything alive. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I kind of, I like things. And so I was like, I'm going to talk about things I like and do that. Instead. And then, and then was like, oh, wait, I can combine uh, my, my random uh, the Twitter handle idea and Jackie Cation. So and seven <laughs> years later, I make some money off of it. There we isn't that the way of it? That's the way of podcasting, ladies and gentlemen. You, too, could seven years later make some money. Some money. Off of it. <laughs> still meaning you would still have to have a job. Oh, yeah. But some money. You guys look forward to it. Kyle Clark. I didn't even ask. I was like, you had to have a dorkdom. I knew that there would, I was thinking you would pick other books, but you picked other books than the books oh, that yeah. I thought you would. I mean, book. I'm a book boy. So we know this as from a book boy to a book lady, we, we understand that books are a way to live. We got, we got spooky reading uh, happening all around us. So what is your current uh, collection of books looking like these days? So what you, what, what's your obsession? When COVID kicked in, uh, and I quickly was without a job or things to do. Uh, 90% of why I do comedy is to be not home and instead out places with people because I love sure. socializing and attention. And all of a sudden we are in a situation where neither of those are allowed. Right. <laughs> so I needed to figure out something to do to not completely lose my mind and shining style, kill my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I have always, I was looking at like, what is a skill? What's something I can do? Like it's a GD correspondence course. Oh, right. And I have always wanted to know how to draw. Like have I- Have you ever tried one of those matchbook ones? Which on one's the that? Inside of a matchbook? I, I might be from the 1930s. Uh, on the but inside, I often reside there as well. So I'm trying to place it. Inside matchbooks is they were like, draw this. And then you might get a free month of drawing lessons. Oh, one of those. Yeah. Okay. The draw yeah. the duck. Draw the duck, yes. draw the man with a mustache. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I have start, started going at it, and, and uh, it actually, it, it man, just, just to continue the ripping off Jackie Cation career I've put together, this comes in tandem with the second thing that you ruined my life with via COVID, what? which was pretty early on in COVID, you were working on a comic book script. And oh, in yeah. an episode, you had talked about how it was hard. And I was like, oh, that's right. I've been meaning to work on one of those. So then because you had been talking about it, I started to, to work on a script or just right. work on the idea of a comic book script, not even that I had something and was really struggling with it. And I said on This Is Rad, something about like, man, right? Like, you know, Jackie is right. 
writing a comic book script when you don't have like an artist or something in your head feels near impossible. So right. cut to, I get a random DM in the middle of the night from a listener to my show who had right. heard me say that and was a little drunk and DM me that if I wrote something, they'd draw it. So what that what? fool did not yeah. understand is that I had COVID jury duty the next day, which means what? sitting quietly at a single table by myself for several hours. And what I did was not bring a book not bring anything except for a notebook because I was like, I writer boy will get bored enough and tell myself a story of some sort and I'll put together comic pages. And I wrote okay. four pages worth of book and sent it to him and he drew it. And now we have a comic called tales from an analog future. That's like kind of a funny sci-fi thing. I say it's like parks and recreation inside a trans metropolitan. Is it a web comic or are you no, guys it's a, it? it's a hard paper copy here on, uh, all right. And he's gone to get it. He's gone to get uh, it. Here it is. Zine copies and this partially. So they're they're in a uh, booklet form. Okay. But part of why that is, is uh, I'm not sure uh, if you found this, but uh, people not buying CDs the way they used to uh, on the well, road. I love it's having people. real hard. You have to explain what the machinery they're going to My merch table it. consists of nice people walking up and telling me that their car no longer has a CD player. <laughs> One after another, just one person after another. And I was like, they make good coasters. Anything? They really do. Okay. And so I needed to figure out a new piece of merch. And I was like, well, you know what I should do? It's comics are incredibly hard to make. So mm -hmm. I should for sure commit to doing that with someone. Right. And books are heavy. Yeah. Oh, so mm -hmm. definitely. So something that's labor intensive. It, and uh, it seems fine because it's not vinyl. And that was like the other direction to go. I'm like, well, that certainly sounds like a hellscape. Yeah. Vinyl is very, very bad. Uh, Amy Miller told me that she couldn't, they wouldn't let her do carry on of her albums. And yep. so she had to check them and they all melted. Yes. All, I, yeah, there was that run there where it became a very hip kind of sexy thing to do. But I think like you have to have such a lifestyle as a comedian to justify having that, that it's kind of like, it is financially irresponsible to try to do it as a, as not a famous comedian. <laughs> well, it's really, I mean, or you just bring five. Yeah. That can sort of fit in front of you. Uh, at least during takeoff. Yeah. And then you can take them out and gingerly leave them on your lap during the flight. And Not a bad uh, idea. they'll melt under my switch though. Uh, right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so that, so that all, was the writing all thing. evolves into, so that's the writing thing. And then one of the things that I always try to find important is if I'm collaborating with somebody, I want to figure out what is the best language I can use to communicate what I'm looking for. I, I, I wow, abhor. That is incredibly thoughtful. I, I, it's, I always feel like it's what we should all be doing as a society, yeah, but sure. like I, I, community. for, and some of it's me being like needy and having abandonment issues. So I'm just like, if I know all the things that can be super helpful, you won't leave me. Uh, <laughs> and, and so I was like, well, I should learn some art stuff. And I, I've been messing with a program called procreate on the iPad and I got a stylist and I would do stuff like that. And a lot of times I would like, I did a thing for a while where I was tracing pictures of comedians and then putting like words and imagery with it, like Raymond Pettibone used to do. Okay. And those were fun. Uh, and then I, I, you know, a couple weeks in, or I think, no, it was July, 2020. Okay. I was sitting around, I was looking, I had done a couple of these things. I was sort of in the mindset of like, Oh, I'd like to, to maybe figure out some stuff so I can communicate to him. And also like, I would, you know, I wonder if you can, I come from a culture where like I was under the impression that if you're not instantly good at something and gifted, you should not do it. Why um, bother? It Aww, was, uh, I think good. that's why I take on so much stuff as an adult is because like I was not seen as bright or talented as a child, but now I've learned that if you read enough books, you can do things. Yeah. It turns out that you're what, I mean, you might, if you try 30,000 things and find out what yeah. you're the savant about, when, it's going to be none of them. It, oh, it's <laughs> wild stuff. But yeah, I was was big as a kid. And so I think because I looked older, but I was, you know, I looked eight when I was five. So they're like, that's a dumb eight year old. Uh, and on. and uh, but it was again, it was fine. Men people left me alone to to read and write and, and learn how to watch TV and, and be you, funny. And you and, lived. Yeah. And so now kind of coming back, there's especially in the last maybe five or six years, as I'm kind of in my 30s. I'm trying to, like, get my my, you know, life together a little bit more. I started right. eating better and living. And so it became this thing of like, what would I do? And so I'm looking on Amazon the, as I do and just literally typed in how to draw. And of the things that came up, I had purchased one book a while back. And so those folks listening, I have the books I'm about to discuss with me uh, so that YouTube. I can, so I can visualize. So these do make it onto YouTube. Perfect. 
Right. Okay. So first thing I got here was a few years prior, I had bought Bert Dobson's Keys to Drawing. And this okay. is a solid book. It's very old school. I believe it's published in the 70s. I also have learned that like the aesthetics I enjoy for different things. I find some books more alluring than others because I love weird professional artist style 70s drawing. Okay. Um, but his is a very like sketchy style. You can see on the back. That's kind of a vibe yeah. of it. And it's very much like an art school instruction of like looking and learning how to like, basically it's about life drawing. Okay. And I found life drawing at that point to be a little too intimidating. Oh, like an actual person? Yeah, to like, like sit, to or, sit or even a... to draw like a still life or a something. I don't know enough to know when I finish it, if it's good or not, or if I did it. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm very much a, like, I like to learn as much as I can before I do. Just because, again, I come from that that culture. And that, this doesn't mean my parents. This is like the, the Simi Valley world I come from was the like, well, if I mess up once, I'm banned from doing it ever again. So I should right. try to learn as yeah. much as I can. Yeah. And so I, I'm looking through and that that book is cool, but it's not doing what I need it to do because I feel like I need a little bit more structure. And then okay. I find uh, our, uh, this <laughs> book you can draw in 30 days. And I was like, sure. Oh. Okay. Book. I call your bluff. <laughs> it is written by a man named Mark Kistler who had a okay. children's show called imagination station on PBS. That is I like an art show for children. So this yep. guy, I have that book. Uh, all of the rest of his books are trash. Okay. Um, <laughs> but this book kind of got me through COVID because those first 30 days I did one a day. I have been buying, uh, I had bought at one point as a real lark, uh, a five, uh, five and a half by eight and a half sketchbook. Okay. Uh, I've always liked the way they look. And so I bought one of those in this book and we're like, all right, every day we're going to sit down and we're going to do the lesson and the extra credit lesson. And, you know, it's so like first day, draw a, a, a circle and okay. it's, you know, you do the circle and you shade it out. And now all of a sudden, oh shit, it looks like a, a, a sphere. Egg? Uh, sphere. And then, you know, day two. So first day was day one sphere day two, many spheres. Uh, <laughs> and then it, you know, it goes through different shapes and it's teaching kind of how to like think in terms of shape on things. And then it, it's basically, it's a book that's giving you all the skills to make things look like they are drawn in 3d. And it's oh. very, it's not a kid book, but it's also, it's kind of an anybody kind of book. So, okay. and I will say the first 28 lessons of the book, are still the basis with which everything I've since then grown and learned and studied. And as I've expanded and figured out what I needed to do, all of it comes from this, like from every other book I'll show. Lessons yeah. Whatever. Now do, lessons 29 and 30 are garbage. <laughs> uh, Cause it's when he starts getting philosophical with you. So it like uh, takes some real jumps and he's just sort of trying to hype you up. And I was like, dude, I really could have used two more lessons here. Let's get back to drawing many <laughs> spheres. Um, and so, but it was, you know, it taught me basic perspective, basic shapes and, and okay. things with, with the two of those, you know, how to cut a hole into a shape, you know, in 3d right. and how to, you know, instead make sense of stuff, you know, like I can now like freehand draw like one and two point perspective, a thing that like at some point in my life was like, that's not possible. That's the thing you need a government license to do. <laughs> no, you could be taught. It turns out. Yeah. And so were you doing them every day, like 28 lessons, one a day? Yeah. I was or doing one. A, I would, okay. was waking. I was doing one a day, but I was also doing like, then taking all the lessons I'd learned up to that point and sitting in the sketchbook and just like fill in a page or two a day. Okay. And using those tools. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so one about six or seven lessons in when I was all of a sudden really immediately starting to kind of see results. And, and it was the first kind of positive post COVID thing that had occurred where I was like, Oh, I feel. Yeah. Uh, and so I kind of, you know, what's started, the name of this book again? I'm so this sorry. This is called you can draw in 30 days from Mark okay. Kistler. Thank you. Uh, and so I went and bought a couple more and this began again. So the learning to draw on this has been an incredible journey, but the sub thing and i i part of me thinks i should do just because i have so much of this at this point that i should do some sort of project with it is learning a, as somebody who's learning art from a correspondency kind of way or whatever that there are a lot of how to learn to draw books out there and they are not all created equal no no some I people got, are better teachers mm, via the book than others and some of them are garbage that has is has that the words didn't. draw manga on it and is and barely a book <laughs> Now, the book that I gave my nephew, and then I also gave Lori Kilmartin's, um, or I told her, to, and she got it for him, her son, was um, How to Draw Mar the Marble Way. 
which is a great one. That's I got that, that somewhere. That's a, that's okay. a seminal one. It's that's so so that's comics. Yeah. I'm kicking off. So this is basic theory. So I've got that under my belt. So now what do I need to learn? Let me look around. So the first thing I think is like, OK, I need to learn about anatomy because that's like the one thing, you know, faces and bodies and things like that, that this thing didn't really cover. So right after Mark Kistler, the next name that you're going to see a whole bunch in the art world is a guy named Chris Hart. And Chris Hart has a billion books. I have this one called Figure, Figure it, out. it Out. It might be the his only figure? worthwhile book to a certain extent, because he has a couple other ones that are good, but like mostly those ones are sort of just like, here's the steps to copy a thing. Like, you know, I have okay. his, because I, at this point, I'm starting to go like, well, what do I want to do with this? Uh, at that point, it's like, I'm working on the comic. I would like to just like, basically I'm, it's all of a sudden it's like, all right, in 2020, I'm going to learn to draw. And my focus is going to be, I am just going to take myself to faux college for comics and, and, and graphic novel work. Okay. And so read a bunch of stuff, you know, really was reading a ton of things within comics, stuff like that and, and going through art and stuff. But then, so I started working with figured out, which is not a terrible figure drawing book. And I find that like, it was useful as a first step to kind of get a sense of like, you know, building something for you know from armatures figuring out how to build a stick figure that has elbows and knees so you can figure out positioning and like what the ratios on the human body are and you know so how right. like your rib cage and your head are ostensibly like the same size as an adult That's which is right. something that like broke my brain i've it, and this is right i don't know why i knew that i there was a book that we had when i was a kid it was how to draw people or something like that yeah and uh what i never met can you draw hands i'm working never, on it sometimes hands and feet are kind of hard Feet are rough. Feet are the thing I struggle with the most. Hands is, I have to be thinking of, like, I can't draw hands doing nothing, but if the hands are doing something because they're so shaped and you know right. where the brakes are, I can do that. But just standing at the side, they look terrifying. Hand. I cannot draw a hand that's attached. Yeah. And so, okay. so this thing gave me bodies and it's also, this is kind of the best, like, kids version of it because it's oh. probably the, the, it's the most conservative in its figures that it gives. Um, but it also definitely leans towards like a specific kind of cartoon style, which is all well and good. Cause for me at a certain point, it's like all looking at every style, like you're going to kind of develop your own over time anyways. So whatever right, you right. pull if, from different if places. If you can learn how to do it one way to begin with, that is good because then you, you could build off of that. Exactly. But learn and how these, to do it at all. Totally. Yeah. And these three then now set the thing of like, now I know like the structural basics that they have, you know, like shading perspective things. Now I understand like elements of the human body and how it looks and how it's shaped and all those things. I got a basic thing. So the next run I have for the while is just going hog wild with both of those just doing, you know, I've probably done the Kistler book, you know, I would probably have done it two or three times all the way through at different points. And like the figure book kind of copied every piece I had. I started buying what's nice is like, I am, you know, broke from, you know, and didn't have a job and stuff like that. But art supplies and art books are very cheap, especially if you're utilizing eBay for art books, like whatever's going oh. for like $20 on Amazon, you can find for $3 on eBay with shipping. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And so that became a real, real fun game was also chasing that stuff down. But at a certain point I was finding, okay, I can do figure stuff up to a point, but there's a point that this book can't get me past. But around this time, I also have started having a few friends who do art have like taken a vague interest in what I'm doing because I seem to be pretty earnest about it. Right. And what's nice is I can start sending a couple of people stuff, you know, so shout out to Jay Gonzo, the, the uh, artist writer of uh, La Manos Destinos, the amazing Mexican wrestling comic book uh, that's oh, cool. out soon on Image Comics, uh, a dear friend of mine and, and really early on was a big pusher of like pushing me to kind of do more, try more, do things. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I got to start digging for more stuff because I've kind of hit and faces were the things that I was having a ton of trouble with. Okay. And, but now starting to learn after these two books that, that so much of what this is just like, you know, I play music and I do sound and I do comedy. Like there is quote unquote rules to this stuff. And okay. while you have to practice it, if you're following those rules of thumb or pieces, you can start getting to where you need to go. You don't have to start from zero with nothing each time, which is literally how I thought art worked is that you look at a blank thing and go, I have the vision and I shall do all the pieces perfectly. And it turns out, right. -uh. no, and that's so, not, that's not. I, so, but how do you do faces though? Like I, uh, what I did you up, learn? Yeah. 
so this is the weirdest book in the entire run. This is Fun with a Pencil from Andrew Loomis, which is okay. from 1912. Uh, or no, 1920 okay. or something like that. It is ancient. The art in it is is truly horrifying at times, charming at times, wildly racist occasionally. Oh, wow. Uh, but All right. the Loomis method for facial drawing is, I, and I've come now to find other art instruction things that are literally just built off of what he did and expand out. There's a company Proco who has a great YouTube channel that also uses all Loomis stuff. And it is a format and it's, you know, you do a circle, you cross the circle, yep. the eyes are on the lines of that piece, and then you ratio down. And it's okay. pretty standard for most things now, but this was the first thing I had that really spelled it out in a way that I needed. Okay. And I find that it is, that text is, it's a big, ugly book with a bunch of weird bullshit in it, but like, my God, it is, it is weird how much if you go through his little face thing there, like you're good. Like even like right. today when we were doing the the pod, I drew two tiny faces using Loomis method while listening to you guys oh, talk. You yeah, yeah. It's uh, if people are ever wondering in the Jackie and Lori videos, I have to be doodling so that I will continue to listen to your voices or I'll get distracted <laughs> by crap on the computer. Right, right. Then you'll just start multitasking. Yeah, and then exactly. You're like, oh, I'm it's, gonna send out the veils. I, I learned that uh, many years ago at jobs is that like right. must keep the hands moving else they will get me in trouble. Right. Um, right. So I'm kind of working through those. And that, again, was was big because now, OK, I can do people and they can be moving and stuff like that. And and it's sort of working around. The next step is trying to like was a lot of just like so I, I have these these, you know, eight and a half by five and a half little notebooks. And it just became for the last two and a half years, uh, you know, I wake up you know, in the morning, because my COVID rules were like, you're up early in the morning, you're showering, and you're being a person in people clothes. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, that was that was I was the, like, the, the, I fall to help. depression quickly. So I needed to like keep structure. myself responsible. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to create some structure, even if there is none. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it became like, like, especially when there was the really nothing to do, you know, I would get up shower, do that stuff. And then sometimes I'd sit for like, two, three, four hours, just drawn, just filling pages, doing, doing armatures, doing stuff. And then started to hit the walls where like something, either you're bored or it's not hitting or you're not having ideas. And I found that it was time I had to start refining things or adding things to it. Okay. Uh, one of the things I started to do was like, well, I'd love to color things. And wait, so you, when you say refining or, or go, are you going back with, with on previous pages and, uh, no, usually kind of over. moving forward, like oh, and, and just kind of new, new page, new, new pages, but but needing to. So it's like, OK, I'm finding where the like holes are in my skills. OK. And so like the things that I was really finding, like perspective was still sort of touch and go. I sometimes had it. And man, perspective books are the hardest thing in the world because there's fair amount. Some of them are great. Some of them are profoundly confusing. There is a, there's the standard one is like perspective made easy, which is again from like 1931. Okay. It is technically effective it is okay. not a wildly engaging read and so yeah. it's weird that sometimes you are reading a book of your own volition full of information you want and yet you are still sort of like what's on tv in your mind <laughs> right, a few right. words You're in. Like, i gotta get out of this book and yeah i found there's this guy who has a whole series of books his name's uh, uh marcos mateo mestri and okay. he has his first book was called framed ink which i bought which is on composition which is still one of the things i'm working on years framed later is ink? like yeah, but okay. he has this book called Frame Perspective, and this is the first volume of it. And it's I would just be like, if somebody's trying to learn perspective, this is just the book I'd hand them. I was like, look, there's other stuff and you could go or you could just get this now because it's funny. Right. It's it's his art is amazing and he's incredibly clear and specific. And then there's also just a thousand examples of okay. different ways to do it. Simple ones, very ambitious ones, ones that help you sort of like see the perspective through a piece of art like he has uh, like for you know single point perspective uh which for those listening like perspective is where like how you arrange something on a page to again create the idea of 3d by creating distance and size distortions and stuff and like he'll show like a neighborhood street and it's very detailed and there's lots of houses and there's all these things and then you just like here's the lines that are the same drawing and it's just all the perspective lines and you're just like oh duh Thank you. These two images are the most helpful thing I've had in a year and a half. So it's like line of sight or is it sort of? Um, yeah, it's it's you find, you know, for one point, you have a fixed point at the center of whatever you're looking at. And because okay. you're looking at it, everything around you is going to look like it is moving out from that. Okay. So it's like when you look down a hallway and it looks like stuff's veering off in another direction. 
Right. Sometimes horror movies will have that yes. sort of forced Super, perspective totally. or whatever. Yeah. And it's 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 also fun because like the more I did this, the more I see all this stuff in the world. And sure. and you know, especially after coming back out into the world when I just want to look at things. Now it's like, mm-hmm. oh look, that those are going that way and this, this. Um, and then he actually has a second volume that I have. I'm this is the one that I'm doing a lot with now because of stuff. I'm, so shadowing is still something I kind of struggle with. And then also drawing people in perspective is a whole other kettle of fish that exists. So he actually has a second volume that's just shading and people in perspective. Oh, OK, um, that's also good. I, I those were real fine. Like that was a, like just kind of kept digging. And it's like, OK, his main books, this. But these other two are straight fire. Are you getting suggestions of books off of YouTube videos or are you getting uh, them just by I, looking at books? I a mix of all uh, some YouTube videos, a lot of like art blogs and like lists of like, here's some great books. And then I would cross check them against Goodreads. That was yep. sort of my like first line of defense often is. Well, and, it's great because there's so many good reviews. Oh like, yeah, it, and Amazon as well. You the, know? the and Amazon is good. Sometimes I won't trust the Amazon people, like because if you're on Goodreads, you're a dork, yes. and I appreciate your your candor as a dork because it you means you thought about this. Yes, and, and you're willing something... to do a good read, and you have to admit that you've read it. <laughs> I, I truly um, have a like. You must be at least this librarian for me to take you seriously. <laughs> too much academic background so are but it sounds like there were books in the beginning that were more workbooks but now they're just suggestions yes you have to sort of pull the lessons out of and you're like i'm gonna try to do that but there's not a clear-cut lesson there and then from there you then have the thing that that's where i kind of had to step into and again i'm always i'm a person who's very easily intimidated so but at a certain point i was like okay i gotta expand this so i ended up doing two different directions one is i picked up painting and I started oh. with watercolor think and I used to think watercolor seemed lame because it's just people drawing flowers and birds. Oh and it turns God. out you can do all sorts of weird crap with it. Well, uh, and it's also very hard to work with. Yeah. So and it, and <laughs> the game changing thing I discovered is the water pen. And so there is this magical invention here. I'll pull it. So this is this is my travel art bag. This is my best friend. It has a blue cat on it. And yeah. I built a bag so that I could take this and my notebook anywhere I go. In okay. 2020, my brother had some really bad dental stuff and needed to have dental surgery. And it right. took a couple of runs and I was driving him to all of it. Well, I can't even sit in the room. So I just have to be outside. So I would just I made this bag so that I would just sit for the couple hours while he's there. And I would just like yeah. sit, try to find a shady spot and just do watercolor or whatever's in front of me until his bleeding mouth gets out oh, of the, wow. the dentist. Ew. And, and so, very ew. So that's but, got painting. That's got so paint here. In it. Let me show you this because this is my my favorite thing I've ever discovered. It's all tore up. There is a Japanese company that does different size travel boxes, and this one it is twelve pallets. You open it up, and it's got mixing pieces. It's got the paint in there, and then do you see these little pens? These are the greatest thing in the world. Instead of a paintbrush, it's full of water. It's inside of it is water. And then you can just, it's like a paintbrush, but that you squeeze and it gives you a little bit of water at a time. And then you can go in there and then you have a little paper towel that you dry off, you know, to get yeah, what yeah. you don't need and go through. And that totally changed how I look at it. Cause like the brush, just brush was so like, ah, it's going to spill everywhere. But this, like making it a little bit cleaner and a little more manageable on where you're going, like right, right. changed it's, everything. It's sort of like the fanciest, it's like a, um, a, a, it's like markers, but yes. it's fancy. But thousand super, percent. Yeah. Okay. And so, so that, and that, so uh, I ended up, uh, it was maybe one of the most nerve wracking runs had to travel in 2020. I had an uncle who died on the East coast and we had to go back very suddenly for a funeral. And I brought that back and that truly like no more beautiful thing to have in a time where you're trying to avoid people, but stuck at a lot of things that you can duck out into yeah, you know, yeah. the basement of their Virginia home and just like draw a radiator and then watercolor. And they're like, where have you been? <laughs> just sitting quietly, not yeah, talking not to people around. Right, right, right. Uh, and so that, that again became like a real run. And then last summer, I think it was, yes, it was last summer. I, I had been flirting with wanting to do acrylics for a while and I had done a little reading on acrylics, but I also sort of had been doing this stuff enough that I was like, you know what? Maybe I just like go for it, but was still sort of like, I'm intimidated. So that's a line. And then what happened was, uh, again, we had had another, another family situation. And so uh, sure. I was back from another family situation. But this time, the moment we got home from this real long draw, you know, thing, uh, my parents immediately left for a trip to Hawaii. 
Okay. Uh, and my brother and his girlfriend left for France for six weeks to go uh, work on a farm. So it's oh. just me and the dog hanging at the house. Right. And so I decided to take it upon myself to like, this is when we're going to go learn painting and I am going to go full indulgent and just went full, like, uh, full acrylic outside but then also like just just living it just the music going outside shirt off painting things and i had <laughs> wanted i'd been fascinated by like black light posters so i made a did a one acrylic piece that was a black light poster based on a digital thing i'd done that's just it's very immature it is a happy face smoking a cigarette that says sure. fuck and i called it 2020 sure uh, sure <laughs> but you, you gotta vent somehow yeah but it was the, yeah here wait i think i've got it here <laughs> you've got it and he's pulling it down oh there it is in yeah. acrylic and it and it glows in the dark when you put it under a black light the yellow and the orange both fully glow oh that's hilarious uh and then i, I started doing kind of more and more of those and, and that became it and that's even a different thing because to me it's now become the thing of like the drawing is just like it's sort of like doing comedy almost where like if i don't do a little of it a day i feel a little off okay and whereas like the acrylic more feels like we're kind of having a fun party, you know, it's just right. like, because like, are you, are you using all those skills? Are you using the perspective and the, yeah, somewhat. how to draw a person and how to draw. Yeah. Okay. Like the, so. the figure pieces it's, 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 it, that was a real learning thing because it was such a, a, it's such a different medium that even like drawing a person, so many different elements apply to it. And you kind of have to like that. And that I was not expecting for painting, painting to be so much different from from drafting and drawing with pencil and, and inks and stuff like that right uh, the way the way the the paint goes on the paper from watercolor to um so were you painting with watercolor were you painting flowers and um like no although i did end up doing do? something like that but i'm trying to think like what is the i have the old watercolor book here i did was it in a notebook it was i there it was a watercolor notebooks like there's yes. like mixed media ones so like Here's like, like I did, I did a phone booth, but that was just a perspective exercise that I decided to then paint. Um, in watercolors though, that's kind of cool. So I painted my pills I take in the morning. Like at one point I have a Mickey Mouse coaster that I put my brain medicine in. And so sure. I threw that one day because that seemed like a fun thing to do. Uh, yep. I did like my dog, you know, so that was starting to get into those kinds of things. Right. Um, and I'm also doing all this in secret at this point, because like, I haven't really told people about it and I'm not, that was before I kind of got back onto social media. Right. Cause that's actually what shy about it. In, yeah. Or and that's that, what got me back okay. to social was finally going like, I should show this stuff to people instead of just burying it in a small hole in my room. Right. Uh, right. And so that, and then the other half of it became, all right, I'm making a comic with somebody where I'm just writing. Yep. I feel like, and I'd been watching one more shout out to a thing on YouTube, shout out to cartoonist kayfabe, yep. uh, which is two uh, art comics artists who are doing the Lord's work and just breaking down comics from a technical design point of view every nice. day. Uh, How I, do you spell I, kayfabe? K-A-Y, uh, uh, I believe it's K-A-Y-E-F-A-B-E. No, K-A-Y-F-A-B-E. It's a wrestling okay. term. F-A-B-E, okay. Uh, um, and they are, they, they do a lot of great stuff and they, they kind of pushed me to kind of not just try writing, but also try drawing, which I am up and down in, but it led me to probably the last of the books that I'll really like throw, feel like I should throw a shout out to. And that is this one that I almost would recommend you might think is interesting as well, just because it really yeah. made me appreciate it. And that is drawing with words and writing with pictures. Uh, oh, and this is by Jessica Abel and Matt Madden. And it is a 15 course uh, program for making comics. It's one of two comics books. Uh, Ivan Bernetti's Comics, Art and Philosophy is also good. I think this one's a little bit better structured and a little uh, better in how it slowly presents. I think the Ivan Bernetti book's fun because it really makes you think about the concept of what like iconography and images are in graphic storytelling, which is yeah. a lot. Whereas this one's like, hey, this is penciling. This is what that means. And here's what a layout is. Um, right. And so I, I have been working my way through this. I'm not done with this one yet. Cause this one, like this really feels like school because now I'm taking everything I learned in the last year from those skills and right. having to apply them to then making many images that serve purposes, okay. which is, you know, different than me going like, I'm a drama Bluetooth speaker today. And, <laughs> you know, and so that, you know, has been a really wild thing, but it's, I, I truly feel like between cartoonist kayfabe and this book, like, 
fully changed the way I look at comics in a way that that makes me go from person who loves comics to person who effing adores comics because right. they're so hard. And, you know, despite things like it's not a wildly rewarding career, you know, to go into if you don't love this stuff. Oh, it's much like podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, stand up where it's, you got to love this any, thing or right, you're having or a music bad time. Or, right. There's not it, you, you don't do it for the money. Yeah. And um, but the 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 weird thing is so. The, this book, the drawing with words, writing with pictures. Yeah. The idea is, is that you were telling this uh, some sort of story. Uh, but you're oh, telling it with the images. Well, uh, well, that's though. That's how they describe sequential art: is that you're you're drawing with words and writing with pictures, and that all of it is giving you the information as the whole that leads to it. Yes. Oh, okay. So drawing with words is sort of because the way the script for comic books works, uh, yes. you have to explain what the scene is. I remember the first draft I wrote of the one comic book I've written, uh, or and it was just an eight pager in an anthology, but. Um, he didn't know what happened at night until mm. like the second or third pass. He was like, wait, is this happening at night? I was like, yes. And so all the art had to change or and it hadn't yet gone to art. So that was the yeah. good news. But um, yeah, it would have. Brian Michael Bendis has a great quote about writing a comic book script that he's like, it's not a script. You're writing a letter to the artist. Well, that's interesting. That's a, that, yeah. That was my big thing with working with, with again, I should shout out Sean Otwell, the artist for Tales from an Analog Future with me. Like that became the thing is like, I am, I am writing the story, but I am just describing the idea I have to the smart visualist who will make me look like not a fraud. Right. Um, <laughs> not a fraud. But I, you know, with the, the drawing with words, which is actually a book I learned existed in the meltdown days. Like I had wanted okay. to buy it back in the meltdown days, but was like, I'm no artist. I can't buy a book. They'll arrest right. me. <laughs> I can't learn things. And so, uh, but even that has, I'm still struggling with pieces of it. I find drawing on Bristol board to be very uncomfortable because it feels expensive. What is that? Bristol board is thick ply paper that you draw comic books on. Okay. It's a little more resilient. It takes uh, black ink, you know, ink well. Um, and, Cause I mean, that's learning to ink. Good Lord. That has been a thing. I've, I've, I've tried the Micron pens. I've tried uh, brush pens. I bought a dip pen, which is, you know, what classically they use for comic book art, the calligraphy pens and stuff like that. Right. Uh, that led to a whole game of like, I, I now am in love with art supplies. I always thought they were cool, but again, didn't have the chance. So like I did go a little buck wild at first. Cause again, when something is $3, you know, right, I'm sort you were of like, getting a lot of stuff off of eBay. You said. Yeah, and, and, and so it was a lot cheaper than going to Amazon, buying these books. Yeah. New. And it uh, was, was cheaper yeah. than sticking, like playing a bunch of video games or doing other stuff. Like it became this thing of like, Oh, I have this cheap hobby that I can keep doing a skill on and like for my weird convulsive brain like that is that was the jam it's like oh we hit all the needs i can That's, consume and learn now i don't know anything about the production of video games but i video games comic books but i assumed i think that i that they were doing them on those ipad -y kind of look at the, those the, well, yeah now like the, yeah. the cintiqs well, well what's interesting is different every artist works differently there is no real standard method for how stuff goes you know there there is uh some people it can be anything it's but i, laugh, but I you know, know that I, a lot of people do have that 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 sort of tablet kind yeah. of situation and really anybody with an a recent ipad is an eye pencil away from having a version of that okay because you so, can get that software yeah. And there's, there's different layers of it and different things. Cause this, this became the thing of like, I did so much analog that learning the digital, but with the comic book stuff, part of it and what they kind of encourage you to do in general, but, but again, it's just traditionalists telling you to try a thing is doing it all analog because you sort of get a sense of the workflow in a way that does then transfer over to digital sort of the same. Okay. And I, I think it's worth doing. Everybody should, I think should do both at some point because like, there are parts of doing all this that I love doing analog, but then other parts that I greatly enjoy, um, you know, just doing, you know, digital. Right. You, know, like, you said that you had um, Procreate. Yeah. And, and Which, that's, and that's the software that you, yeah, and that's, that's with. the kind of the most common drawing software they have for the, the iPad and, and uh, tablet world of stuff. And it's, it's pretty intuitive. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think I bought it because it seemed fun. And I was like, I got five bucks. Let's do this. Oh, really? Uh, it's, it's, I think it's cheap? 10 bucks. 
Uh, right. but it's, so it's not, time. not prohibitively expensive. I think that's part of what makes it so great. The other one's like manga, manga studio that is now clip studio is the other one. That's very similar for people who do it on computer. Found out Dave Gibbons has been using manga studio for like almost his entire career since he's moved to digital. Like now, that, who's Dave Gibbons? Dave Gibbons is the man who drew the watchman. Uh, and he oh, okay. also, uh, did, did, uh, give me Liberty. And he's worked on a bunch of many other, uh, comic book pieces, but yeah, the watchman guy. Okay. Uh, I've read the watchman. So it's a, so when you copies are around, yes, it turns (laughs) out. But if you, if you end up, I mean, it's one of the cool things when you look at different comic books that is glaringly obvious that isn't as, as true as when you go to a, like when I go to an art museum, oftentimes they will put the same kinds of art in an exhibit. Yeah. And so you will, you will have to look at the difference between the artists within the same kind of, uh, genre or same kind of uh style when you uh go to comic books you every comic book is drawn entirely uniquely there is no standard yeah it it doesn't feel i mean some comic books are easier to read and there's house styles and stuff like that that can take certain things you know the the i always think like that kind of everything sort of looks like george perez at dz in the 80s unless it's a big stylist working in and michael golden at marvel for a lot of time Uh, oh and they're trying and they're trying to sort of standardize keep it sort of so that you're not freaked out when you see sort of why i fell off of a lot of modern books is that the house style across both companies was just sort of not my jam and so like unless it was because i tend to like the real weird i mean my favorite person in all of comics is charles burns who is a total fringy guy but he did he did black hole which is maybe it's like that in slaughterhouse five depending on my mood or my favorite book of all time oh wow Um, okay and it's you know, and it's one of those guys who's like really fun because for I, I really appreciate him because he is weird and he makes really interesting stuff, but it's not willfully weird. It just feels like it's coming naturally out of a guy as the kind of story it is, but also like does a ton of corporate work, like worked with Altoids, like was one of the guys on OK Soda, if you remember that. What? Uh, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And so he's like in the same world as Klaus. He's a little weirder than Klaus, but I also think he's really kind of picking up as as the world is getting wilder. Uh, I mean, Black Hole, it, one of the subplots is a guy who falls in love with a girl with a tail. And that was when I was like, is this my favorite book of all time? Wow. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the, but when I like some of the stuff, like yeah, I'll, I'll read, remember Bill Willingham? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Fables. So Jack of Fables and Fables and um, Love Fables. It had that newsprint kind of, um, it was printed on, you know, all comics used to be printed on that newsprint well, yeah. and, and your hands would get gray and gross. Even paper stocks from kayfabe learning that like cartoonists have different opinions on how their stuff comes off in different paper stocks and methods, like, and how they'd have drawn it different if they knew it was going to this type of paper. Oh, really? Yeah. That's blew my kind mind. of fascinating. Yeah. That, that is super interesting. And then, but then I remember like with a lot of Sandman, and uh and lucifer t- they're they they're they Arts look like shift. they were done in in oils yeah you know and um and some of them were i guess some of the covers are often done um, yeah dave mckean stuff was was usually i forget who did the covers for fables but they also it's a similar thing where they had like somebody with such a great defined style i mean i guess the same thing with like glenn fabry for preacher um i was trying to figure out like there is, and he was on the Dork Forest, and he's great. He's listening right now. Hey. Uh, he does the covers for, uh, like, he did a lot of uh, covers for Archie and Sabrina. Oh, hell yeah. Those are amazing. Yeah. Glad and, you're listening. Great job. Big fan. Right, right. Um, so, I'm, uh, and his dorkdom was Doctor Who, and it was lovely. Bless him. And, uh, God damn it. Where the hell? Um, hmm. This looks like. Because they were, because uh, some of them were Robert Hack. That's his name. Oh, there we go. Robert Hack. And his Dork Forest is fascinating, too. I don't think I've done more than one or two episodes about Doctor Who. And his was the first one, I think. So it might have been 10 or 12 years ago. Robert, I think you're due. And, uh, but he I does a lot of covers. Yeah. My current partner used to go to the Meltdown to see the doc- vintage Doctor Who screenings. So it was weird that, like, many, many oh. years ago, like, we yeah, may have yeah. crossed paths when I was just like, we got to get these Doctor Who people out of here. The open mic started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Doctor Who uh, is, is unsettling for me. 
It's scary, uh, it but that's kind of well why done. I love it. It's, yeah, it's incredibly well done with a very low budget for 20 I love years. that old Who stuff. Uh, up through, I mean, and, and the new stuff's also like a lot of fun. Like I've definitely fallen off, but like I, the, the, I love cheap stuff that's swinging out of its way class there's maybe nothing i respect more than something that is like outgunned outfunded and cannot possibly and is still like we're going to town i'm just like i will right. take my hat off to that every time and that is well, so we much currently of Doctor have Who. a 65 inch television and so we're watching these tv shows a lot of these BBC, <laughs> these bbc television shows and it's too detailed you're like yeah that's oh, they don't have the budget for British this television. 65 Nobody, nobody should have to be on this Wild. size television and see the, you see the props and you see that, you know, you can almost see the masking tape. Oh, 100%. So um, it is, it, it's a, it's a bit of a trip, but I, yeah, I, it was interesting because there's, there's comic books I want to write and I did write um, just a, just a premise. Right. And it's, um, but I like the idea that you can write anything. Right. I mean, the yeah, one that, that you publish yourself. It. Yeah. Chris Mancini also has um, yeah has one out. I remember when he, he did that. That was really yeah. cool. And it's ongoing. I think he's got an, another volume coming out. I have right now. So with my book there, it's two stories per issue. Because I was like, well, it's already complicated. Let's also make it kind of like Love and Rockets. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so it's two 12-page stories for a 24-page book. Both All stories are self-contained, but within the same universe and characters. Okay. And I wrote, it's going to in total be four issues. So it'll be eight stories across these things. Basically, there it's a group of characters uh, who all like work together at like a radio shack, but we're in like an insane future. Cause my thing was like, put, I always love take a really exciting world and let's focus on the most mundane part of it and never expand past that. So my, <laughs> my thing was like, I love living in this future. None of these people are going to be heroes who save the galaxy. I want to know how their day was. <laughs> and so like, the, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, go ahead. It's, I was going to say, uh, so like the second, the two stories in the first issue, one is lit a guy who, May, thinks maybe he made the wrong choices in life and ended up where he is because he could have been a nanofog rock star because i have a whole thing in this about how there's there's nanofog or like tiny drones that can create light and shade it's basically mysterio from spider-man okay. but as a thing it's like and that's like that's like playing guitar being a dj in this world is like you can be this and go to bars and do cool nano stuff and that's right. a thing you can do. And so it's, but it's, it's all, so it's got all these sci-fi ideas, but all hung on the top of a guy who's having a midlife crisis. <laughs> you know, and the other one is about a girl who goes to community college. And I was just like, I want to see what space future community college looks like. The, uh, there is a guy who I don't, I, I feel like he does his own, he draws and, and writes. And for many years he did, uh, he has a web comic and he has, um, um, uh, he was doing paper comics, right? So, and his name is John Allison. Oh, I know that name. That it's and his stuff is um, is that slice of life, life yeah. where you're like, what? And and it's it's, but he's been doing it for decades. Adrian Tomini was one of my early favorite comic book people that I literally just stumbled upon. But he does Optic Nerve, and he did he does a lot of stuff for like the New Yorker for art and stuff like that. But he does these incredibly small moments as stories, and it broke my brain as a kid when I was reading it, like a sophomore in high school, where all I know is like Kevin Smith and Frank Miller and Alan Moore, and Neil Gaiman is like the the most humanist of any other writers that I'm, I'm dealing with. And then there's this guy who wrote about a guy who was just like a dick to someone at a temp job one summer. And it's like, right. You know, I was just like, this can be a story. And that became, you know, so much of the stuff, you know, I, I mean, I've read every Chris Claremont issue of X-Men. Like I am, I am on the table for, for many old classic things. I love old teen right. Titans, but like, I am a massively influenced by like American independent indie comics and really starting to find other countries, amazing comic work. And like, yeah, really, there's, the, yeah. And there you really appreciate across the board with comics, like Simon Hanselman's become a real favorite of mine as of late, who did mega hex and does Megan mob, which is a, a one that's just fun because it's like, Oh, these are insane characters, but like, and it's the drawing is not traditional what things look like, but like, this is a perfect comic book world. Right. Well, and the weird thing is that like, so I found this, which is his, um, he, it's the slice of life about these, um, 
these women who go, and he has an entire separate comic book about where one of these these roommates in college grew up. I love that. That's what and, makes all this stuff awesome. Right. It really does because it can be about anything. And it's and he did it himself. And I think that it, you know, eventually it just became too prohibitively expensive to cre- keep creating his own paper version. So he, yeah. he's gone back to the webcomic. And I miss it because I don't read enough webcomics. Same. Even it's, though I could, yeah. Andy reads. I mean, and he's a machine. First, like, well, he wakes up and it's like the first thing he does is he checks all of his web comics, and then there's also some ongoing fake D and D thing called Darths and Droids that he reads, and it's this this I don't know this guy or this this team of people that are going through every frame of every Star Wars product and pretending it's a D and D campaign, pretending it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tabletop gaming campaign huh. and the characters that play the different characters, like a guy who wanted to min max his character plays R2D2. And so the dungeon master is like, the game master is like, well, then you can't talk. Oh, I love You this. can do anything. You've got the MacGuffin. You've got the, you can MacGyver anything. You can do whatever you want, but you cannot speak. And he's like, all right, and um whoa that's so darts and droids and if you go back they've gone through you know the the first you know four five and six and then they go back to the prequel and they you know and i believe they did rogue one and now they're doing um the tv show the mandalorian it's some things interesting yeah so they (laughs) have some time because it's something that they love and it's such an interesting idea that you could do whatever you want right we work in a business that is so built around feel no joy, make only product that that will appease people who you hate. And oh, I like, don't know about that, but well, uh, it's uh, well, but just, wow, I guess it's your just like well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I guess what when, when I I'll, I'll back this up and be a little less of a drama queen here that it's I find <laughs> that people are often confused that I do things because I enjoy them and take pride in my work. That is so interesting because you grew up here in the Los Angeles area yeah. where one should say that there were rose petals at your birth going, be yourself. And you're like, nope, I was born in the CB Valley. They were just like, why don't you get a job? You know, if you work for the post office, you get a pension. (laughs) So there is a bug in this. We are coming. uh, We're, we're, we're coming in hot here. So by the way, I am talking with Kyle Clark. Kyle Clark is the, uh, producer jesus christ I don't oh god know jackie is being attacked by the room by itself one tiny bug there is a <laughs> tune There's in real, guys right yeah, around minute say, 50. give this a listen yeah this it's gets a, really yeah, exciting gonna get on the that's gonna be a great clip okay so <laughs> kyle clark this is rad is the name of his podcast his. um yes and two albums what are they called they are called absolute terror and i'm a person which is very true and they are both available probably everywhere but for sure if you want to buy them at itunes and amazon yes please and uh possibly pandora and spotify but who knows in this in this day and age it's It's a world gone mad it is i do check periodically going like because like i hate that part of me is like well if i get deleted off spotify it means i'm a level of success i can at least take pride in (laughs) i'm famous enough for them to remove me from (gasps) their all my stuff is gone from spotify it's mean you've made it in this business Uh, jackie finally finally the success i've never been looking for it's literally an extra 300 dollars that is not coming to me uh-huh. this month. so very sad uh, but uh available on itunes still streaming <clears throat> on itunes and amazon because they are both all for sale so mm-hmm. they are also available for streaming if you have those um apps app's you guys the app's it's uh and also if people are curious it's still up there i i am going to have to adjust it soon because it is an older version but if you go to gumroad there is the first issue of uh tales from analog future if you go soon it's actually an uncorrected version right now because we went to print with the first version with a bunch of errors in it wow. uh so if you um, can go and buy that, that website uh, gumroad.com it's a really great space it's for people that. being able to g-u-m-r-o-a-d there you go. Dot and com. they, uh, it's a place where you can sell a lot of like, it's like Etsy, but for like digital product. Oh, interesting. It's NFTs. Really, I, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know how much they do with the NFTs, but like, maybe right. I'm just turning a hopeful blind eye. Um, right. but, but they, it's been another, it's been cool going through all this stuff and finding 
more indie resources and DIY resources out there. Like as, as you know, somebody who tries to stay pretty crafty and, and scrappy and doing this stuff, it has been really neat to see like, not just that there's like resources, but there's like resources and communities full of information about resources to do this stuff. Cause it is like, you know, self-publishing is a, is a thankless endeavor, but right. like you I open mean, that box. It's easier today than it's ever been. And yet it's still, people are doing it. Feels less. kind of pointless. Yeah. yeah. Where, where you're worried about it and you're like, and then you hear about 50 shades of gray and you're like, but that's not what I wanted. <laughs> so that's not why we created the internet the english teacher um, inside of me is ultimately often just happy anyone reads anything that is true <laughs> like, there's that I'm, and there I'm, is some fan fiction that is amazing and the purpose oh, of fan fiction is mostly fandom and secondary a uh, secondary secondary uh is uh to teach people how to write yeah oh i mean, it's, I, mean it's, uh, I, I i kicked my teeth uh, i cut my teeth uh you know starting with that stuff back in when i was a kid I have so many friends who uh, have done decades of fan fiction and that just uh, millions of words. And I've had I, fan fiction nothing... things turn into real projects. Like that's right. always the most exciting. Right. That's, that's the amazing, that's the amazing part of it. If you do the work, something will be created. And yeah. that is cool. Here's a, uh, here's a question that I shouldn't ask with four minutes left, but oh. here it is. Uh, do you do any, have you tried any sort of live action, live, um, like portraits or anything like from, uh, from life? Uh, yes, I'm actually starting to do more life drawing. Um, okay. I've yet to do a, uh, well, there's a website called like Line of Action fruit. that okay. is a really great life drawing thing, but you can simulate life class. I actually just sent it to Lori for 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 her kid and he, he was okay. digging it as well. Um, but so I started doing those to do like gesture and get basic figure stuff. Uh, but then I have yet to ask a person if they'll sit and let me draw them. Um, I right. you know, would like to get there, but I've been, so I'm trying to go out more to places and like, I've drawn a lot of fountains, gone to a, <laughs> sat in front of a lot of sure. coffee beans and, and drawn whatever the bank was in front of me from that angle. So right. and learning more shapes and stuff. I I've developed another, a husband of a dear friend of mine is an incredible artist. So he's taken me a little bit under and like critiquing stuff and giving tips on stuff. And like, he's been a pretty incredible thing. We'd gone on a trip together and both of us realized we both just like sit and doodle before going to bed. So we ended up getting the bro down on that, which was fun. That is outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Rangers of the Dork Forest. We have had with us, Mr. Kyle Clark again, again. Thanks for listening, everybody. Sure. It's, uh, uh, it's at At Kyle Kyle Clark is rad. At Kyle Clark is rad. Uh, Which I always I mean, type he's... Kyle is rad, and it isn't. It's at it's... Kyle Clark. <laughs> it's uh, and I'd love for if anybody's got thoughts on any of this stuff, either suggestions for books to check out or questions they've got if they want to get into it. I again, the teacher inside of me cannot help but want to help. Right, and you can find him at Kyle Clark is rad, and um, and Please listen do. to his podcast and all this stuff. You can also email me, and I will forward it to him. And then um, we talk on occasion. Know, we do, we do. It's uh, Jackie at JackieCation You know the rules. Everybody, take care of each other. <laughs> My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?